Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Plante part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. It's here for us to understand these different types of algae. So first we will start with chlorophyxy. The term itself speaks for itself. Chloro, that is from the term chlorophyll. So these chlorophyxy are the green algae. Because why are they green? Because of the presence of the pigment chlorophyll in them. They are autotrophic because they have chlorophyll, they can prepare their own food in presence of sunlight, hence autotrophic. Talking about their habitat, they are primarily fresh water, however, they are also found in soil, tree or bark, provided there is some moisture there. They can be unicellular, colonial or filamentous. We have spoken about each of these types. If you take examples of a unicellular chlorophyxy, it would be chlamydomonas. If you talk about a colonial chlorophyxy, it would be volvox. If you talk about a filamentous chlorophyxy, it can be spirogyda. So it can be one cell, it can be in the form of colonies or it can be in the form of filaments. Now let us look at some examples of chlorophyxy, chlamydomonas, volvox, eulothrix, spirogyra. So all these are examples of chlorophyxy because they have the pigment chlorophyll and they are all green in color. So basically the presence of the photosynthetic pigments is the basis of classification of algae. Now let us talk something about the structure of chlorophyxy. Is there anything special about the structure of chlorophyxy or it is just like any other algae? Let us see. Cell wall is an important part of the structure. So in case of chlorophyxy, they have a rigid two-layered cell wall. There is one outer wall and an inner wall. The outer wall is made up of pectin and the inner wall is made up of cellulose. Now what is the function of the cellulose and pectin? Cellulose, you would have seen that most of the cell walls are made up of cellulose, right? Because it is the main load-bearing structure. So it can bear the load. Since it can bear the load, therefore it can protect the material which is present inside the wall. So that is why the purpose of a cell wall is to ensure protection. So cellulose is the main load bearing structure. The presence of pectin, you have another additional layer outside the cellulose layer which is made up of pectin. What does pectin do? It acts as a matrix, a gel like material in which the cellulose fib microfibrils are embedded. So it kind of provides a little flexibility to the cell wall. It also gives a support to the cellulose. So together cellulose and pectin can make the cell wall strong but at the same time flexible. So it will be strong also and it will be flexible also. Other than that chloroplast is seen in different shapes in different species. Chloroplast is a very important component right because chloroplast is the one which will actually contain chlorophyll. So chloroplast can be seen in many variety of shapes. In some it is spiral shaped, in some it is ribbon shaped. If you see uh, the spirogyra, you see the chloroplasts are ribbon like structures and they are arranged in spiral form and that is why it got its name spirogyra. So, it, so in some uh, it is uh, in the shape of discs, in some it is in the shape of cup. So that they actually come in a variety of shapes in different species of chlorophyxy. Chlorophyll A and B is present. So here what kind of chlorophyll is present? Chlorophyll A and B. Pyrenoids are present. What are pyrenoids? Now the normal cell organelles are all there in place. On top of that there is an additional cell organelle here that is called pyrenoids. So what is pyrenoid? These are storage bodies in chloroplasts which store proteins and starch. Like how we had vacuole, right? When we, when we talked about uh, the structure of a cell, we spoke about vacuole. What was the purpose of vacuole? It helps in storing food, right? So generally in plant cells, you have a large vacuole which stores food. Now, in addition to the vacuole, these chlorophyxy have pyrenoids. They are also storage bodies like vacuoles but they store starch as well as proteins like vacuoles mostly store starch but they store starch as well as proteins so it is an additional storage body present inside the chloroplast and it is present in the chloroplast so with this we got an idea about the structure of chlorophyxy let us now talk about the life cycle of a chlorophyxy 
Now, when I talk about the life cycle of chlorophyce, we want to see how do they reproduce. So, we will see that cycle. Now, they can be isogamous, anisogamous or oogamous. Now, by now we know these terms. Isogamous means both the gametes will be similar. Anisogamous, dissimilar in size. Oogamous, one gamete will be large and non-motile and the other gamete will be small and motile. So, it can be any of these. Now, talking about <coughs> its life cycle, it would be somewhat like this. Let us suppose you have... Uh, the plant. So what is this plant? This chlorophyce is an algae. It is a green algae. And what is algae? Algae is nothing but a thallophyte. So it doesn't have distinct stem, leaves and roots. It is just like one structure, one vague structure. So we call that vague structure often as thallus. That is a structure which sometimes look leaf-like but it doesn't have any distinction between roots, stem, leaves and all. Okay, so this is the thallus. That means this is my algae. Now, this mature algae will give rise to gametes. So, it will produce gametes. Now, what will happen with the gametes? These gametes will undergo fusion. So, the gametes will fuse. Now, depending upon what kind of gametes are they, whether they are two different male and female gametes or they are two similar gametes or they are two dissimilar gametes, Whatever type of gametes they are, they will fuse together. So fusion will happen and as a result of fusion, a zygote will be formed. Now when I talk about these gametes, we all know that the gametes are haploid cells. So two haploid cells will fuse together to form a zygote which is a diploid cell. I don't think I need to tell you what is haploid, what is diploid. Haploid, that is one set of chromosomes. Diploid, two sets of chromosomes. See, it is not possible for me to explain all these basic things again and again. So what I recommend you is please go through the lessons of class 9th and 10th before we start with your 11th lesson so that your basics are clear. So now a zygote is formed and then this zygote will undergo cell division that is meiosis. Now meiosis and mitosis, these are the two topics which we will cover in one of our coming lessons. So meiosis or which is known as the reduction division. So the cell will divide to give rise to spores. Now these spores will be formed and then the spores will germinate under favorable condition to form the thallus again. And again these thallus will give rise to gametes and the gametes will fuse to form a zygote and this cycle will keep on continuing. So when I talk about this thallus, this thallus is nothing but the chlorophyce, a mature plant. So this is multicellular. So it is a leaf-like structure as I said before also. So this is a basic life cycle or a life cycle of any general chlorophyce. Okay. So here if you see, there is a diploid phase which is involved. Which is the diploid phase? This one. So this zygote is the diploid phase. But the diploid phase here is short-lived. That means the zygote does not remain for a long time. As soon as a zygote is formed, within a very short period of time, it undergoes meiosis and it forms spores. And the spores again, they are haploid. And those haploid spores will germinate to form a thallus, which is again haploid. So the diploid phase is short-lived and the haploid phase is dominant here. So if you see these spores are the haploid spores and they only germinate. So the haploid phase lasts for a longer time. Again the gametes are also haploid. But the diploid phase lasts for a shorter time. So whichever phase in a life cycle lasts for a longer time, that is known as the dominant stage of the life cycle. For example, when you, when you talk about our life, our life starts as a small baby. Then we spend our childhood for around 15-16 years. Then we enter our uh, teenage for another couple of years. Then we enter into adulthood. right? And then we again become old and that is our old age. So these are the different phases of our life cycle. So any phase of the life which lasts for a longer period of time, that is known as the dominant phase. For example, if you say that the adulthood lasts for the longer time because it starts somewhere around say 25 and it ends somewhere around 50. So 25 to 50, that is 25 years you are an adult. So you are in that same phase. So you may say that, okay, this is a dominant phase. So what I'm trying to say is, 
what do i mean by dominant phase it is that phase of the life cycle which remains there or which which is long lived which lasts for a longer period of time so in chlorophycy diploid phase is short lived and the haploid phase is dominant thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again